start. Great. Yeah, so today we wanted to talk about going all in and what that means for us, and we'll kind of give some background on what we did and kind of uh, how people, if you're starting a business from scratch or you're joining a franchise or if you're even just doing a side hustle, kind of ways to approach it and a way to think about going all in. So what we did was Steve and I were in school at the time. We were both going to college when we started our moving and junk removal business, Moving You and Junk You. And what we did was we decided to quit our jobs and go pretty much full time. We were both going to class at the time, so we couldn't 100% go all in and and not do anything else. But we did uh, decide to pretty much bet the whole farm on going all the way in. And that's with no cash reserves. Or any cash in general. Yeah. Yeah, We were pretty much broke. Yeah, we had like 50 bucks to our name. So we just started walking out the door and handing flyers out to apartment complexes and things like that. And we kind of figured that the business would be able to sustain our lifestyle because we were working and we had, you know, rent and bills and we were paying for our own food and things like that. So we uh, we figured that we'd be able to to have the business fund that. And we found out pretty quickly in a few months that that wasn't the case for us because we, one, had no business experience and two, we also did not have any sort of cash reserves. We had no money to put in to really generate any revenue. So what was happening was we were just going out and doing a lot of activity, but we weren't bringing in a lot of sales. So we kind of had to backtrack and figure out what the best way was for us to, you know, really survive, you know, so we we went all in, but I think we went a little too quickly and didn't think things through. So even though um, we had the right idea to actually go all in, all in what we did in practice didn't work out for us. Well, and on the flip side of that, uh, you have analysis by or paralysis by analysis, right? Because a yeah. lot of people who are wanting to start a business who have never started a business before, what they're going to do is they're going to overanalyze. They're going to say, okay, I need to have this perfect. In sh- I'm going to have this in line. I need these conditions to be perfect. Mm-hmm. I need this to be lined up. Uh, but I think that's going to happen in, in like two months from now. Then I'll be good. Then I'll be good. And then two months comes and it's not perfect because it, there never is a perfect time to actually start. Right. So balancing the going all in too early and then analysis by paralysis by analysis. Right, I yeah. So I think a great way to think about it is at least if you're going to make the decision, it comes from, I think I heard Tony Robbins say this, it comes from the Latin word scission, like incision, like so to cut off from. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to actually go all in, even if it's not you know, completely quit your job and change the entirety of your life, it's actually make some sort of commitment that either you take something away or you make a... a substantial enough investment that it somewhat forces you to become accountable to yourself if or even better to somebody else right Mm -hmm. so like a good one an analogy that we made before is if you're going to go to the gym maybe actually commit and, and pay for a year membership right because now you have to go you already paid for it well you don't have to go but you are putting yourself in the position where geez i did pay this money so i feel though there's an obligation that i have to go so a good example would be you know, if you're going to, if, if you want to start a business on the side, right, if you don't have the ability maybe to completely quit your job, what you should do is, is put the capital out there to make, uh, to pay for an LLC, right? Like that's a good example. Like Absolutely. you actually put the get money out and say, I have to do it. Yeah. You have to get some skin in the game to actually make that jump. And this is especially important for somebody who has never started a business before. Like us. Right. Yeah. Like we had, we had no business. We didn't even really have any professional experience besides working as a laborer and, you know, work, I worked at a restaurant, you know, you had worked a little bit of an administrative job, but you, we didn't have a lot Not of professional, professional work. Right. No sales experience, no business management experience, no salary position, nothing. Yeah. So we didn't have a lot of experience on what it would actually take to generate, you know, enough revenue or enough sales to, to really sustain our lives. So what we did was when we went all in, we kind of went too quickly. So we had to take a step back, right? So we had to go get other jobs just to be able to fund, you know, our, our lives. Now, what happened was we did actually maybe take another big step into going all in because I was in my third semester of school and you had just graduated with a pre-med degree. So instead of going to school for me for another semester and for you, instead of going to medical school, like was the plan, we decided not to do that. Yeah. So we did go all in again by saying, hey, instead of doing that, we're going to get these jobs and work on the business on the side and let it kind of grow itself so that we could get to the point where we were then going to make that jump. Which I think is the first important realization of going all in, especially if you view the business as a side hustle to start. Right. 
because going all in when it's a side hustle means, yes, you're going to have to sacrifice going out on Friday night. Right. And you're going to have to sacrifice going, uh, you know, with your friends to go hang out on a Tuesday to watch the game. Mm -hmm. Like those are the things you are going to have to sacrifice. You do have to go all in in that sense in terms of your free time. So you have to have your stable income to support your life. And the going all in is the extra time. Yes. Right. For sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's the time. Exactly. You're, You're not really subtracting all the time what you're doing is just subtracting the free time you know that uh you would be allocating to doing something else because you would work and go you know do whatever you're gonna which do. we misunderstood miscomprehended about going all in when we were first starting because we thought it meant cutting off everything right which i don't think is the wrong thing if you have the resources and you have the ability and the aptitude right but we just didn't we didn't have the the financial resources. We didn't really know how to do it either. So, you know, we had no experience, which is even, I think, more important than even the financial period, understanding, okay, how to make a business plan, like how to prepare and plan for things. So for most people, if this is your first business, you're going to start on your own. I think you know, that's the important part hustle. when it's your yeah. first business. Because yeah. like you mentioned before, if this is your second or third business yes. and you have all that experience under your belt and you understand what it's like to have expenses and not have the cash flow to cover it and not freak out, being yes. able to float to next month because you know that the work you're putting in now is going to pay off next month yeah, for sure. and everything else that goes into business mm-hmm. ownership. Yeah. If you already have that experience with another endeavor, it's a lot easier to go all in right away because you know what to expect. And not even just the practical side, I think for us, and I think this is true for most people that I talk to that have been an entrepreneur or business owner, it's the emotional thought process of the up and down, right? Because generally, even if you, you know, didn't have a salary, you worked an hourly job, you had an idea of, okay, I did this much, I'm going to get X, Mm -hmm. right? I put in Y, I got X, where if you're a business owner, it doesn't necessarily go like that. There are ebbs and flows. So you have to be able to ride out the ability to say, hey, these two months, I didn't really make any money, or even worse, I lost money. Well, what do I do to handle that to make sure that I actually stay up, you know, and uh, keep doing what I have to do to move forward? So that's a big one, not only the practical case of how do I make sure I can afford you know, the basic necessities, food, you know, shelter, water, all those things are, you have to make sure you do that first as important as business, business ownership is, you have to make sure you can support yourself. But, um, you know, how do you make sure you can emotionally handle those up and downs and and understand, like you said, don't freak out when something, when things are not going well, or things are slow. They don't go to plan according to plan. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So now I do think there are ways that people can think about, joining a business without having to be all by themselves or being all in 100% by themselves. So, you know, a good example, of course, that we would use is joining a franchise. For sure. Right? Because what you have is you get the experience of another business owner or business system that's not only going to support you, but they have a plan for you. They know how to tell you, hey, this is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is how you should think about your finances. And if you're having an issue, you have somebody to call. Another way to do that would be to maybe join with a partner who does have some business experience so you're not totally on your own. I mean, even us, I I have never actually owned a business 100% by myself. Mm -hmm. I've only ever done it with a partner, which is great because you have somebody to talk to, you have somebody to ride out some of those bad times with. And, you know, whether it's a franchise or just joining a business with somebody else in general, that's a good way to kind of get your feet wet without having to be all in by yourself, you know? So there are ways to go all in that aren't just like we said, 100% just jumping off the cliff and trying to figure it out on the way down. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, And that brings up another good point in terms of experience and leveraging uh, the resources that you do have. So for people who do want to go all in, they don't have any experience, how how do you even begin to dip your feet in? And what I would suggest is there's nothing wrong with getting a job in an industry that you kind of are looking to get into and learn vicariously through the people that are actually doing it, right? right? right, So if you want to get into, uh, you know, owning your own real estate company, it would make sense to work in a real estate office and learn what those people who are at, who own the business, who are actually doing it, learn what they do. Yeah. You know, because right. I feel like a lot of times people underutilize that aspect of experience because it all, it, it's more, what do I know? Or who, who would I find someone who's going to go into business with me? You know, what do they know? It's like, yeah, but you, you can learn without having to just jump in and do it all right away. Yeah, 100%. And I would also say, and I would like to hear your thoughts on this making sure whatever you pick as a business, the industry, you either really love it or you really love business in general 
And you definitely at least don't hate whatever it is you do because it can be so easy. And I know a lot of people that think that they're going to make a lot of money. And it's probably the case. If you're smart and you become a good business owner, you can make a lot of money. But if you hate what you do or you know you even don't like it that much, it's going to be tough to sustain in the long run because you're going to do so much of it. And not even just the, the action of doing it. You're also going to be so involved. Like you're going to talk about it all the time. You're going to think about it all the time. So you really got to know, I I love this thing or in general, I just love the game of business, the game of business of sales and marketing. That really fires me up. That really is something that, that I'm excited for. You don't have to maybe wake up every day and, and love exactly what the industry is, but you definitely should one, like it and two, you should love the game of business. I mean, don't you think that's a huge thing to yeah. think about? So what I would say to that first and foremost is don't just chase the money. Like you're 100% right, right yeah. in everything you're saying and love what you do. But I think the more practical advice to that is don't just chase the money because people think, I know it's very, uh, I, or uh, whatever it is, it, it, people think that, oh, if I just do what I love, I'm going to be happy. But you need to make money to do that, right? Right, yeah, yeah. But also people think that if I just make a ton of money, then I'll be happy, I'll be happy which is just as wrong. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the first piece of advice is to not chase the money, even if something sounds like you can make a ton. Yeah. If it sounds like you can make a ton of money really easy, it probably sucks to do. Yeah, because yeah, <laughs> like, even know? if that's true, it's probably a rough industry or a rough Absolutely. thing to deal with. Yeah, yeah. Or even even if it's not that rough on you personally, who know you could be doing something that, well, hopefully not illegal, but even something that is emotionally draining, like you're doing yeah. something that feels as though you're ripping people off or you're, you know, n- nothing uh, against the industry. But if you don't like the idea of, you know, being a collections agency, even though I'm sure they make some money, it can probably be a rough on your, your moral, you know, toll if you don't especially like uh, business in general. So yeah, that's a great point. Don't definitely don't chase the money and don't do something just because you love it without a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Now I would say next to that, really learn whatever industry says, just say you, you stumble upon something like moving and junk removal and you're like, oh, like that sounds cool. I could get into that. Like talk to people who actually are doing it and see what their day to day is like. Yeah. Because you might not, it might sound great. But you don't know what the actual day to day is. Right. Just like when I was uh, in my undergrad, um, a lot of times they would you, you, people would talk about what kind of doctor they would want, would want to be, and everyone's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, I want to be a pediatrician." And all of our teachers would be like, "Yeah, everyone's everyone wants to be a pediatrician until you have to give an infant six shots in a row. Then you don't want to be a pediatrician too much yeah. because that act, the actual oh, act of sucks. doing the job, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you think like, "Oh, yeah, I'm going to be a sucks. pediatrician. I'm going to treat kids. That's it's going to be great." Like it. it Sometimes the job and the job description are not equal, right? right. So I think that the next step in that after you don't chase them or don't just chase the money is talk to people who are actually doing it and see what their day-to-day is like. Maybe even go shadow them for a day or a week. Ask them what the hard parts of their job are because just everything has hard sucky parts, right? Like there's no job that really is just cupcakes and butterflies. Mm -hmm. Um, But – that doesn't mean that you have to hate the parts that aren't cupcakes and butterflies. Yeah, and you only sure. can know that if you try to seek that information out by someone who's actually doing it. And it's going to be easier to go all in in any capacity, but especially when it becomes time to really cut the cord completely and you really try to to go all in, like this is the only thing I'm going to do if you're going to turn your side hustle into a full business or you're going to invest in that franchise or you're going to buy that existing business, you better – know at least have an idea as best you can of what you're getting into because when it's time to go all in and the money you know you know quote unquote is really on the line you better be ready to actually do that every single day because that's what you're going to be doing and that's the only way to be successful is to to actually do the activity all the time you can't say well i only like this part usually the the hard part is also the part that lends to being you know uh the most fruitful or the most important portion yeah yeah. or or, and and on top of that, even if the hard part isn't the most fruitful, it's if it's not the most fruitful, I should say, it's the longevity. Yeah, it's right? the most necessary yes. maybe is a better way to think about it. Yeah, yeah. That's because that's going to – because even if um, – like, like for our industry, we could be really good at moving and that's going to take you really far. But if you don't know how to handle a complaint 
you're not going to do well in the long run. Yeah, you're going to struggle. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So even though that's not what makes you your money, it's what keeps your business healthy, alive, the reputation up. Yeah. It, it is one of the most vital parts, as right. you're saying. You have to be able to deal with the the issues. I think that's true in business in general. Of course, too. of course. I also think that if you want to go all in, and that's kind of you know what we're talking about here, is you have to know that there's not only there's going to be ups and downs in the, the financial and the emotional portion, but there's going to be ups and downs even just in the business. Like even just like every business has complaints. People just always think, in my experience, when they talk about a business, they go, wow, it must be so easy for you. You should see what happens when customers are upset with me. It's the same for everybody. How I don't know how many people have told me, man, it must be nice. You guys don't have to deal with any issues. Yes, we do. Not every single customer is happy all the time. And, you know, my, I, I know lawyers, I know bar owners that say, hey, you know, oh, it must be so easy work. You know, for me, when I have an issue, it's such a big deal. Like every single person has to deal with people not happy. And, and how you handle that is one of the biggest differentiators, like you said, of, of being a, a business owner. So, yeah, that's a great. That's well, a great that's why point. I think it's yeah. so important to talk to someone who's actually doing it. Because you don't, no one can guess correctly what the tough parts of a job are going to be yeah. or of a business are going to be. Like you got to just talk to people who are doing it and get a couple different opinions because that's how you really understand, oh, this is what I'm getting into. Yeah. But no, it also I, makes you more comfortable when you're making your decision. Yeah. Because if you know the goods and the bads, right. it, it helps you be more comfortable jumping For sure. all in. Now, what do, you, what do you say to somebody who is super analysis by paralysis? Because I think – you would say that that would be something you would have leaned towards oh my God, 100%. a lot, yeah, a lot before you became uh, an entrepreneur yourself. What what would you say to somebody saying, "Hey, Steve, I kind of want to do it, but you know, how do we toe the line between making sure they're practical, but also actually making the jump?" Because I think the the flip side of what we're saying of making sure you're practical and you're being smart is also a lot of people tend to have quote unquote side hustles that could actually be something but they never really make that full time I'm going to do this I'm mm-hmm. really going to go all in you know with my energy and my attention what what would you say if somebody came up to you and said, Steve, I, I think I have this thing, but how do I make that that leap, that that emotional leap, which is really the most important one to actually doing this, you know, day in and day out? Yeah. So I would say there's there's two trains of thought that are my immediate knee jerk. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm biased towards one because I chose this option. But uh, having a partner, I think, is for someone like myself who's super analytical and always was going to make sure to do the best job possible. And if I wasn't sure it was going to work, I was probably not going to do it. You being a partner to me took all of that stress off my plate, or at least a lot of it. Right. It made it a lot easier to do things that we weren't comfortable with because – I had you to kind of motivate the the actual initiative, right? right? Yeah. So, so I think good. F- no, so I was going to say find somebody that maybe would would push you to to do it. It is a little more on the the other yes. side of the coin. Okay. Yes, and and even speaking more holistically, regardless of what kind of personality you are, if you're worried about making the jump for whatever reason, finding someone who fills the voids that you have, mm. because if you have yeah. if you get into business with the same type of mentality person you guys are probably going to have the same weak points as well. And as long as you're okay with dealing with those, it's totally fine. But for me specifically, I didn't need someone to do more analysis. I could do that on my own. I needed someone to help fill the void that I had of the push, right? Right. Like actually going and saying, hey, let's make this jump. Let's let's take the risk and and go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be be my my initial uh, piece of advice. Now, where I would say if that if you don't want to do that, because there are some people that they don't want to go into a partnership or they might not have the means to, you yeah. know, not everybody has the luxury like we did where we were, I, I mean, we had a lot of friendships and you and I just happened to mesh really well in right, terms right. of like our business yes. mindedness. Yeah. Um, I would say definitely get comfortable just pushing the envelope a little bit. Mm-hmm. So for instance, you know, with, We'll we'll just use moving and junk removal as a um, as an analogy. So if you want to start moving and junk removal as your side hustle, just start Saturdays. Just make a little jump, and right. and just kind of test the waters. And you you might have you might not be able to buy the trucks right away. You have to rent, or you might not be able to hire people. You're gonna to have to you know get people who can only work Saturdays. You know what I mean? But having not yeah. a heavy commitment, but just pushing your boundary just a little bit, and continuously knowing when you're starting to get comfortable and having that be a trigger to like just push 1% forward. Because the other thing about when I look back, 
I was more all or nothing. So it was like I was going to analyze and I was going to make sure the plan was perfect. And as soon as it was perfect, then I was going to execute on it. And if it wasn't perfect, I wasn't going to do anything. You know right, what I mean? Right, so, yeah. but but accepting that, you know, it's like a it's like someone who's extremely overweight. Like, don't look at the person who's super ripped. Just look at the person who's ten pounds lighter. In, you know, and as yeah, you're, as yeah. you're viewing yourself, right. bite, yes. bite off a little bit less than the end goal. Because my when I was wanting to do a business, I was always thinking about sitting on a yacht with my pina colada with money stacked up yeah. left and right because that was the that end goal good. Yeah, and no. it does sound good <laughs> yeah, yeah. well we're not going to get there yeah, tomorrow yeah. and right. for someone oh, who's yeah, going to yeah. analyze a lot that can't be the vision all the time because I would go oh man like that just seems like so much like I, I gotta yeah. I gotta plan this out even more because like that's my big goal and it's like dude you're not even close to being there why don't you just worry about like just trying to do a job for, right you know what i mean yeah so, so, so take so to try to yeah not not plan as much as much as planning is important don't go in with no plan it's better to you know a bad plan executed today is better than a great plan tomorrow. exactly like, yeah so if you're unsure just do something you're and, saying, and just and, hey yeah. just do what what can i do let's just try to yes. do that today that's a what, great what is a good of, way to, to push my boundary without making to get me... some momentum yes. going yeah right and then if you get some momentum it'll be easier to make the jump because you feel it because especially if you're that Type, I think it's true for anybody in general, mm-hmm. but especially if you're the type of person maybe that is extra worried about all the the things that could go wrong, you're never going to make the jump unless you get some feeling of, okay, I've got some momentum and then I can feel confident to kind of ride the wave. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot and I think of sense. it's, it's yeah. that that's true for a lot of things in life that you're not comfortable with. Right. You know, like, like I do jujitsu and if I'm not comfortable being in a position, sometimes I just get in that position just to like kind of feel it. But then like, I won't go back to it for a little bit because yeah. like, I don't need to get overwhelmed with not knowing it, but I just test a little bit. And I'm like, okay, that was enough for today. You know what I mean? For sure. But anytime you're not comfortable, not looking at it as, oh man, like the end goal just can be overwhelming sometimes. So yeah. I think just push the comfort zone a little bit, just start what you can do and just try to get that to be a consistent rhythm. Just yeah. Saturdays. Doing something, doing, and then you're going to bump that up bump Mm -hmm. that up until you wake up one day and say i'm totally 100 percent all in this is all i do yes yeah for sure because i think that's that's the hardest thing for most people is not just to start but to to really go that make that transition to making it something that's quote unquote real a lot of people Mm -hmm. are especially if you never started a business you think that there's real businesses and there's what you're doing Mm -hmm. but i think any business that has somebody pay for something is a business you know they're not all created equal i get that and there's there's a Big obviously divide between that and Apple, but that's how they all start and, and understanding that and that'll make you feel more committed about, hey, I, I actually can go. If I go all in, that's when, you know, things uh things really get good. And do, do you think there's definitely, because I do, a huge difference when you really make not only mentally, but even just physically, meaning like I, I come in here every day and I really rely on this business to to making that jump from 99% to 100% all in. You, you know what I mean? Where a lot of people like kind of do a little bit of stuff, but they don't necessarily like make that jump. Like I, I think there's a there's like an untapped potential that people don't like get when they are only 99% in, you know? And that's what we're, we are talking about going slowly, but making sure that your end goal, when whether that's three months from now or six months or a year or, or five years from now to actually going 100% all in. If, if this is what you want to do, if you've decided, hey, I, I want to own my own business, I want to be an entrepreneur, which means I'm taking the risk to, to say that my livelihood, my future is dedicated or is predicated on doing well at this business or businesses in general, that there's a huge difference between doing it kind of and then as to the point where you say, hey, this is this is how I'm going to make it. You know what I mean? For sure. I mean, I think that, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's kind of the analogy of the burning of the boats. Yes. Like you sail in, you get off, you land on the beach, and you light them on fire. So you you literally can't leave. Yeah, you got to figure it out on the island. Like that's how you take the island. That that was what I was alluding to. Yes. I mean, there's such a big divide between even, you know, being mostly in as opposed to being all in like when you're this is i gotta do this you know um it's a huge you you just move in a different way for you know? sure and you know not not to just go back to it but in terms of like that person who's going to be an over analyzer and taking smaller bits that can be i am not doing anything on saturdays if i'm if i don't have jobs i am just going to be you know marketing i'm gonna just I work just, on my business yes. on saturday i have yes. to work on my business yes because you can you can yeah. be you can burn the boats without doing what we did in terms right. of just like throwing, you know, caution to the wind. But with you no would money. say though, 
I'm assuming somebody wants to become an entrepreneur, which means this is what you do full time. You don't do it along with a full time salary. Like it's a so, good start yeah. in entrepreneurship, but to become one, to become say my I wake up and do my business and then I go home. Yes. To do that, your goal should be, even if you say, I just work on my business on Saturdays, is to get to the point where you say, I just work on my business. Well, of course. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like making sure that that is just one stepping stone of, okay, yes. well, then I'm going to, to do that. Just like if you want to run a marathon, like you said, okay, I'm overweight. Yes, I start with looking at the person who's 10 pounds, but eventually I got to run 26 miles. And to do that, yes. I got to run 26 miles. I got to get out and say 26 and run that way, right? Like that's, well, yeah. And, and not to go too do, deep into this because we have another one about this but that, that ties into goal setting right and i, I yes. think he, yeah, keeping yeah. you it's easy to keep yourself accountable if you have n- not written down goals but if you have some solidified goals yeah, yeah. like it's saturday today and then i made a commitment to myself 100 percent in that you know okay it's january by march it's going to be now two days a week and then right. this yeah you know what i mean and then and then but you keep yourself on that track to where whatever goal you want to get to you have on some sort of time frame so that you can follow it to keep yourself and i think that adds into your 100 yeah. percent commitment for sure you have to stick yeah to i what know you're... you'll never be over the fear like you're yes. always going to be afraid you're going to be afraid before you start you're going to be afraid before you go all in all in but always and you'll be afraid years later because if you're growing and you're you know you're pushing the boundaries you're going to be worried about what the next step is are we going to do this right is this going to go well you know what do i need to do for all these different things so yeah yeah definitely 100 yeah it's easy to avoid the iceberg when you're in a little rowboat but the titanic had it a gets hard harder time. Yeah, yeah 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 so yeah so even after you go all in it doesn't stop but it does get better so yeah for sure so i think um that's a you know pretty good idea of, of what it takes to to go all in and how people you know want to think about it and how to interpret going all in yes yeah yeah and what that means for you mm-hmm. you know and 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 whatever that 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 realm is you know that you are looking to to jump all into in business like we said whether it's just a side hustle or you know you're deciding you're going to go from your corporate job to investing two million dollars into something whatever it is it's it's still the same process emotionally i don't care what yep. level you're on um you still have to cross over that threshold you know to like we said burn in the boats yeah cool well thanks we all appreciate right. everyone listening and uh until, until next, next time, time. yeah <laughs>